welcome to Arts and Entertainment. I'm Deborah Gilbert, your host, and thanks so much for being here today. I certainly hope you enjoy the show. Well, we're going to highlight Dory Berenstein, who is the co-founder and CEO of the Broadway Podcast Network. And Dory, thanks so much for being here today. So nice to have you. Thanks. I'm so happy to be talking with you today. Um, Dory, why don't we take the viewer back? I know they'll be very interested in knowing about you first. Take us back to your background. Tell us about yourself. <laughs> sure. Uh, I have been um, uh, wearing many hats for, for many years. I'm a, a Broadway producer. I've been producing Broadway shows for over 25 years, and I have been in the film business for even longer. Um, and uh, the Broadway Podcast Network came out of um, my great love for the Broadway community uh, in partnership with uh, Alan Seals. Uh, we wanted to give a, a, create a platform for incredible Broadway storytellers. And so with over 140 podcasts, we really have created an amazing di digital destination for theater stories. Uh, so we're really proud of that. Um, but my background is film and television and theater and now podcasting. Did you think when you were growing up that you might be a performer? Was that ever something that you wanted to be in front of the camera and on, th on stage? Uh, I clearly, at a young age, realized I had absolutely no talent. So that was, <laughs> that was never an option. Uh, I also was very fascinated early on behind, about the behind the curtain of Broadway and how it all came together. Uh, I was riveted by that. And thank goodness, <laughs> uh, because I never would have made it on stage or on screen. So um, uh, being captivated early on with the creative process and storytelling and um, directing and producing and writing, uh, uh, it was clearly that's the direction I was heading, not performing. With the directing, writing, and producing that you're mentioning, did you go to school for any of that, or did you learn as you were going through different projects? Uh, I didn't go to school for that. Um, in fact, um, I have grad. Yeah, I, I went. My I was a triple major in economics, theory, and um, history, uh, but did uh, all sorts of focus on the economics of theater and uh, understanding the business of uh, the film industry. Um, my graduate degrees are uh, at the Kennedy School of Government, uh, where I was just fascinated by foreign policy and um, business school. So actually, indirectly, they all contribute to very inventive storytelling in, in different world areas, but certainly uh, I, I wasn't professionally trained. I did go to the Yale School of Drama, though. That is true, because I had launched my career in theater, producer, and I didn't, I didn't really get the business. The business was very elusive and um, uh, complex. Um, it didn't make sense to me. And so I went back to the Yale School of Drama uh, to uh, lose myself in understanding the history of the business of Broadway. So in that way, I, I, had, I did have some training um, and took advantage of, of the school and took all sorts of classes and uh, theater directing and all that. Um, but, um, you know, being trained as a director, being trained as a writer, being trained as a producer was really, uh, I, it was all kind of in, in the moment, uh, in the trenches learning. And that's how I learned best. Well, I love school, obviously. <laughs> is your love Broadway and theater? You mentioned film and television. Tell us about those different worlds. How did they come about? Sure. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about storytelling. And so finding uh, the platform that's right to tell a story is, is what I love doing. Um, my deepest passion is for theater, though I've, I've been in the film business um, forever, um, going all the way back. Um, uh, one of my first uh, jobs was to supervise production on the film uh, Dirty Dancing. So I go way back in the movie business, uh, indie film, and I was uh, at uh, Walt Disney Imagineering um, supervising the movies that were made at the theme parks around the world. Um, and I'm a documentary filmmaker, so I've been making movies on my own for many, many years um, about the behind the scenes of Broadway primarily, but uh, uh, other sorts of films as well. Um, uh, Carol Channing on Marvin Hamlish, uh, that was on American Masters, on uh, Show Business, The Road to Broadway, 
and um, many other films. Uh, so I've been very entrenched in that world and love it deeply, um, and uh, while simultaneously being deeply involved in the Broadway community. So it's um, to me, I'm kind of pa platform agnostic. It's really where uh, the story that I want to tell should live. Uh, but there's nothing like live theater. So that, to me, is my absolute sweet spot. And it's so cool for me when those worlds collide when I'm making a film about the theater world. Tell us about Broadway. What is it like being in the theater space? Tell us what it's like to be there. Well, it's been challenging <laughs> over the past couple of years because live theater uh, certainly was hit hard by COVID. But um, what I love so much about the world of theater is collaboration, is working with amazing people to tell stories. You can't do it alone. You know, in making documentary films, I have a small team, um, um, and I love that too. But in theater, you really have to work with uh, uh, just a, an incredible group of people. Everybody has to be on the same page to figure out how best to tell that story. And you know, the costumes and the set and the theater magic and every, the music, the whatever, you know, if it's a musical, it all, everyone has to be on the same page to figure out the optimal ways to tell the story. Um, it's it's a wonderful community and, uh, and there's nothing like live theater. For me, I'm so transported when I go to the theater. So creating stories that are, that are either moving or incredibly funny or, um, uh, just transport you to another world, teach you about something you didn't know, but, you know, just is, is no, there's nothing like it. It's just, I love it so much. You mentioned COVID and because this show deals with arts and entertainment and performers of all genres, it's affected everybody in the community. How has it affected your world in the theater and film and industry according to your perspective? Well, for theater, uh, obviously Broadway shut down. Um, uh, I think today is actually, this week is the anniversary, two year anniversary when Broadway shut down. Um, and uh, I had two shows on Broadway in the fall that were um, uh, among the earliest shows to return. Um, and that was a long absence. Uh, and, you know, we, we, that's one of the reasons the Broadway Podcast Network um, uh, really exploded during that time because we tried to keep Broadway alive through all sorts of inventive storytelling um, uh, online. Uh, and uh, we created plays and musicals, and soap opera and all of that online. Um, and it continues in, in a very robust way now. But, you know, Broadway was, you can't, you couldn't have live theater during the pandemic. And now Broadway is back in a very, very big way. And, um, the uh, audience are just like thrilled to be back in a room experiencing live theater. And it's, um, uh, you know, there's so many incredible shows that are back and new shows that are opening. I think there are 18 new shows opening next month on Broadway. Um, the two shows I had in the fall, Is This a Room and Dana H are um, now going to be are all around the country. And I'm gearing up uh, for quite a few new, new shows I have on tour The Prom, which was on Broadway. Uh, and uh, we also uh, were in the midst of, of making the Ryan Murphy Netflix adaptation of the Broadway show um, with Meryl Streep and um, uh, James Corden and Kerry Washington, um, uh, so on and so on. It was an incredible cast. But we had to shut down for COVID. Um, and when COVID hit, we um, had to figure out how to get back uh, in a, a room, a studio, to finish the film so that it could uh, air um, uh, as scheduled. Uh, it was very challenging to do that. So obviously, both on the film side and the theater side, we've been very much affected. But both worlds are back full steam and hopefully uh, here to stay. Now, it says in your bio, which I was thrilled to read, that you're a four-time Tony Broadway producer winning and an Emmy Award winning director, producer, writer of film and television. What's it like winning an award? What's it like getting up out of your seat and going to the podium and saying something and getting that wonderful statue? <laughs> uh, well, it's it's thrilling. Um, I, um, I've, I've had 
some wonderful moments where I wasn't expecting to win at all. I really thought it was impossible. I was actually in one situation I had uh, I had created, directed and produced a movie about Marvin Hamlish uh, uh, for American Masters. And we were actually up against my husband, uh, who had been a producer of Cosmos. Um, and, uh, you know, Cosmos with 1,500 people behind the scenes making that incredible series. Uh, and, you know, against my little movie. Uh, and so I actually had very uncomfortable shoes. I'm telling you too much, but I had very uncomfortable shoes. My shoes were off. I was just relaxed. I was having a great time because I knew no chance of winning, not at all, but then we won. And <laughs> I had to like, what? I had to scramble and find my shoes under the seat in front of me. Uh, and uh, I had absolutely nothing prepared to say because we weren't winning, you know? And so that was, <laughs> that was a funny one, um, uh, thrilling. And it made, it was just so exciting to actually beat my husband on that one. Uh, but it's, you know, it's um, because it is, uh, you know, on these Broadway shows, because it is just, it takes so many people to bring a show to Broadway. And so many people have dedicated so much time and energy and love to make it happen. It, it's, it's, it's thrilling, but it's, it, the most important thing is an opportunity to acknowledge all the hard work of so many people that have been involved. For the viewer that's watching us now that would love to be a part of a Broadway production, how does somebody start to get involved in the business, whether it be film or television or Broadway? I know we're talking Broadway, but what kind of experience do they need to be able to get some experience to be hired? Uh, well, I think it's, you know, there's so many different jobs and opportunities in the world of theater and film, um, and there's so many different ways in. There's no one way to do it, and there are many people who do go to school for it and have great training, and, you know, uh, and then other people who have opportunities through internships um, uh, or entry-level jobs that work their way up. You know, there's just so many different opportunities. I think the most important thing, both for film and for theater, is uh, for people who want to get involved is to volunteer for, like, if you're in school, there's school productions all over the place. Um, someone is making a uh, uh, their student film or they're putting on a show and they need help backstage or, you know, there's so many different opportunities to get experience in the trenches. And the more of experience, more experience that you have that way, it's going to show somebody, I am passionate. This is what I want to do. I want to go for it. Um, and I'm getting as much experience as I possibly can. Um, you're you're going to be rise to the top when it comes time to hire somebody, uh, and so I think that kind of experience is invaluable. And um, uh, learning as much as you can along the way, and asking a million questions. And I think and being, you know, in those early jobs, being as responsible, button up, and um, and uh, you know the the be the best uh, employee you can be, um, and the references you'll get, the opportunities that you'll be exposed to, that people will want you to be there in the room, it just goes from there. Okay, let's hold that thought. I'm Deborah Gilbert. You are tuned into Arts and Entertainment. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. You matter. You matter. You matter. And your words matter, too. Your words matter. What you say in the hallways at school or in the student section at a game matters. Words can be hurtful. Words can be offensive. Words can leave scars. Words can also inspire. Support and uplift. You and your words. Are they both important? As, As a matter of fact, fact yes. yes. Community TV. Your neighborhood TV. Publicly funded and a reliable partner for cable companies nationwide. It provides transparent coverage of local and state government, education, and public programming. A digital town green that can be watched anywhere, anytime, and on any device. Watch us on today's high-tech distribution methods. Community TV in Connecticut. Local. Unfiltered. Reliable. And, and yours. yours. 
and welcome back to Arts and Entertainment. I'm Deborah Gilbert, your host, and I hope that you enjoy the show that I have for you today. Well, we continue on our conversation with Dori Berenstein. She's the co-founder and CEO of the Broadway Podcast Network. And Dori, why don't you tell us a bit about that? Let's start a little bit about the conversation about the network. Tell us what that is. Sure, well, uh, before the pandemic, um, uh, I, I I live um, a ways away from New York City and uh, would be commuting in every single day. And I love podcasts. I just love them. And uh, I'd be listening in it and I would be trying to figure out where are theater podcasts. And I'd be you know, trying to find them. And there was no there there. There was no clear destination to go to find theater podcasts. They knew that there were some out there, not many, but I, it was just so hard to find. And so I met uh, Alan Seals, who, who was an executive at Google, uh, uh, through the musical I had on at the time on Broadway, The Prom. And uh, he had a theater podcast, and we talked about this. We talked about our frustration at not being able to find theater storytelling in podcasts. Uh, and uh, we said, let's solve this problem. Let's create a, a network where we aggregate everything that's out there under one roof, but then we also go into production and we create lots and lots of theater-related podcasts and, and, and uh, podcasts about the entertainment business that are tangential. And uh, we launched right before the pandemic with 15 podcasts. Um, all amazing podcasts with a lot of important Broadway people and television film people. Um, and we've grown so fast and uh, uh, we have over 140 different podcasts now. Uh, we've done plays, we've done musicals, soap opera, um, where we have incredible artists involved all the time, all different kinds of podcasts. Um, interviews behind the curtain of all these great Broadway shows, the, the stars that uh, from today, the stars from the past. Um, it's an, an incredible home for uh, theater storytelling. We have over 7,000 episodes. Uh, so anyone at all who's interested in theater, theater education, theater, how do I get into the business, theater stars, divas, Broadway Podcast Network is the place to be. You will find so much interesting programming, and uh, we're we're having a blast with it. And uh, and we have listeners all around the world, everywhere. Now I know many of my viewers will say, "What's a podcast? Can you tell us what that is?" <laughs> uh, a podcast is like a television show, but it's just audio. Uh, we actually have some video content as well, but uh, but for the most part, they're audio episodes, and so you a lot of people listen to them while they're commuting in cars, while jogging. Um, uh, they are, uh, you know, they can be about uh, interviews with people. They can be um, storytelling. We've done, as I mentioned, plays and musicals. So it's really storytelling, and it's. Uh, all about theater, and you can go to the Broadway Podcast Network or bpn.fm um, is the shortcut, and you can uh, check it out and see. I'm sure there's going to be many, many, many podcasts, podcast episodes that will be of interest uh, to you. Um, uh, we definitely have many, many things for everyone. The individual that is doing a podcast now that would like to be a part of the network, how do they submit themselves to you for consideration? Uh, if you go to our website, uh, we have under contact, we do have our, uh, a way to contact us and let us know what you uh, are up to. Um, and uh, we will get back to you right away. Good talk about the website. Tell us what we will see when we visit it. Well, you, if you go to bpn.fm, you'll see our uh, an incredible <laughs> array of podcasts under so many different categories. Uh, uh, you can spend a lot of time searching to find what you want. You can use our search engine so that if there's a podcast on a particular artist or a particular show uh, that you want to you know, go deeper on, um, you'll find that there. Uh, I, we have podcasts by incredible um, Broadway stars, uh, 
uh, you should just check it out and see see what we have. And I think that you, uh, once you're there, you will, you will just want to listen to everything. It's a lot of great content. Have you started to think about what your calendar will look like in 2022, 23, 24? What are some of the things that you'd like to accomplish? Well, uh, I have uh, uh, two documentaries that will be coming out uh, in the coming year. One I can speak about. Um, we, during COVID, I we went behind the curtain uh, of Cats and Phantom of the Opera when they were the uh, among the only two productions in the world happening during COVID um, and uh, captured uh, keeping the show alive, um, keeping um, artists that had flown in to Korea from all over the world to put on these shows in the midst of the pandemic, how they navigated all of it to, to keep these shows going and to keep art alive during the darkest times of the pandemic. Um, and that film will be out uh, in the coming months. It's called The Show Must Go On. Um, and I'm very proud of that. And I have another documentary film that will be coming out and two more films that I'm in production on. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, The Prom is touring the country and uh, I'm thrilled about uh, that musical being in every high school, which will be happening um, starting in the fall. And uh, we have uh, Is This Room and Dana H, the two shows I had on Broadway this fall that will be playing around the country. Uh, and uh, I have quite a few other shows uh, that are Broadway bound in the works that will be happening over the next few years. And, uh, and then the Broadway Podcast Network. We are in production every day on incredible, incredible new content that is, uh, I think, going to keep people listening to podcasts for a very, very long time. Speaking of the podcast, do you think that that's going to last for a while? Do you see that's going on again, 2022, 23, 24? Are they going to increase in popularity? Podcasting is one of the most popular forms of entertainment now. It's skyrocketed. Uh, it was already on that trajectory before the pandemic, but then it just went through the roof because people had a lot more time to be able to listen to podcasts. Uh, uh, over 60% of people in the United States listen to podcasts on a regular basis, and so that's just climbing and climbing. Uh, they're very, very accessible. They're transportable. They're not going anywhere. They're here to stay. So they will be with us for an incredible, uh, incredibly long time. It's also uh, an amazing way um, to go deeper on shows and on with artists. So you see a show and you want to know about how did the show come to be? How was it created? What was, you know, what was the, their creative process? What about the people that were involved behind the curtain? And I assure you, we have podcast interviews that go deeper on all these different shows um, that take you into really fun uh, theater stories or, or uh, stories about the arts or uh, also, you know, people who are coming up in the business. How do you get involved? How do you get a job? How do you audition? All that, we have so we have podcasts dedicated to that. Uh, Carrie Butler um, has a podcast called Breaking Broadway. Carrie is one of the stars of uh, uh, Beetlejuice on Broadway, and uh, she has a wonderful podcast that's all about the audition process and breaking into Broadway. So um, there's there is something for everybody, and it's an easy way to get all this information. Podcasting is here to stay, and I think it's uh, um, majority of people will will be enjoying podcasts soon. Most most are already. How about Broadway? What does that look like for its future? Will it continue to get better and better, better as the pandemic starts to shift? Is it here to stay? Well, Broadway has been around for, <laughs> for over 100 years. It's definitely not going anywhere. Broadway is back um, in, with a vengeance. Uh, as I mentioned, 18 shows are opening next month. Uh, a lot of people had time during the pandemic to do incredible work. And uh, we're seeing the results of that. So uh, the talent um, that's uh, coming into the Broadway community now, and of course our stars that we all love that are, um, uh, you know, appear on a regular basis. I mean, the talent's incredible, both on stage and behind the curtain. And um, the the writing that's happening is just epic. It's just 
amazing. So go see a show. Go see a show, not just on Broadway, but on tour um, locally. Um, there's nothing like live theater. It's so transporting. And, uh, you know, it's it's magical. It's, it's how we all connect. And after being isolated for so long, um, theater is that much more magical because it gives us an opportunity to all be together and all in the same room and experience something as a community. And that's very precious. Well, I thank you very much for being here. We've run out of time, so thank you so much. Thank you. It was lovely, lovely speaking with you. And to all of my viewers, if you're interested in being a volunteer in my program, I'd love to hear from you. And if you think that you'd be a great guest on the program, I'd love to hear from you as well. You can contact me at artsandentertainment at mail.com. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show. I'm Deborah Gilbert. You have been tuned into Arts and Entertainment. Have a super day. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.